Hi everyone, welcome back to the garden. And hasn't the sun over the last week been absolutely fantastic? Hopefully a little taste of some of this to come. Have you been out in your gardens this week? If you've got any projects in the go, then let me know in the comments below. Personally, it's been great to actually enjoy being outside, not be fighting against the wind for a change. That blue sky, the beautiful sun is definitely a bonus. And today I want to talk about something that will help improve your summer garden, give it more tropical impact and really add that lush jungle vibe. And it's inspired by this picture here. This is a picture I bought from my tiny little office upstairs where I do my editing, and it's an amazing little picture. This was actually made, this print was done in 1906, so it's over 100 years old. It's a genuine lithograph. It didn't cost a load of money, I just got it off Etsy, but I thought it was a fantastic little picture. And personally, it's got so many of the plants in it that really appealed to me. For a start, you've got the Gunra there, obviously the star of the show, and under that you've got Hostas, exactly the same combination that I have here in the garden. Up there, you've got an agave in a pot, and I've got an agave ferox that looks just like that, again, in a pot, so that's a bit of a coincidence. And over here, you've got a very lush border, planted up with ricinus, and all kinds of different exotic looking plants. So today, I want to talk about three simple summer garden tips, tropical garden design and planting tips, that are inspired by this picture. I hope they'll help you out. Tip one then, and you just have to ignore the flies hanging around me, no jokes there. A tropical style garden is all about the big leaves. Whether you want to grow a vibrant tropical garden or a more densely packed jungle style garden, it's all about a good base of strong leaf forms and especially a lot of green. So here looking at this picture, the very obvious thing, even though this is 100 years ago, a lot of the same trends and styles are still definitely here today. Creating this garden, it doesn't have to mean that every plant is an expensive or rare exotic. It doesn't have to mean they're tender and need a lot of special care to get them through the year. Any plant works, as long as you combine them the right way and really pack them in. So looking over this side here, we've got the Gunnera Manicata. I don't know if you saw my recent video looking at uncovering my Gunnera here in the garden, but I'm really excited to see how big they get this year. They are absolute giants. But surrounded that, you've got hostas. So even plants that we've considered quite normal, you can use them in a tropical style garden to really recreate that whole sort of exotic vibe. Like I said, not every plant in your garden has to be some really rare foliage plant that costs you 50 pounds. Sometimes even a two or three pound hosta from a supermarket, they all help create that picture, that sort of exotic vibe. Together, they really will look like a jungle. The Gunner and Hosta over this side then, they're great examples of plants that need minimal winter protection. The Gunner, for example, they can take down to minus 10, probably even lower than that. All you need to do, and I've done several videos about this, chop the leaves off at the end of autumn, maybe November time, use them to cover the crown, and then take them off around March or April, and the plant grows away again. It's very tough, and as long as you do that basic winter protection, you can grow it in most of the UK. And the hostas that surround it, they're even tougher. You don't need to do anything in winter. I have zero problems getting them through. As long as you choose a moist spot, they'll grow really well and get bigger and better every single year. But over this side, there's some even better examples of unusual plants that you can grow if you're on a budget or you've got absolutely no space to overwinter plants. And that's because you can grow a lot of these exotics from seed. A lot of the big leaves that you can grow as annuals, they'll grow very quickly and they can soon fill up a garden in a single season. So over here, firstly, you've got the ricinus. I've done a video all about growing ricinus from seed. The seeds are toxic, I'll mention that again in this video, but for me, they're well worth the risk. Obviously, if you've got young kids or pets that might actually nibble them, don't grow them, or at least grow them somewhere far away from the, their access. But if you've got the space, if you've got somewhere to actually grow these amazing plants, a single seed planted in even May can get to eight foot by the end of summer, which is really incredible. And joining the ricinus, you've got other coleus, smaller plants that again, you can grow from seed every year. So it's great if you want to build a tropical style garden without spending a huge amount of money, you can still pack those leaves in and really create the effect. And over here, there's one that's even cheaper, even easier to grow, it's sweet corn. Behind there, you've got the Nicotiana, but for me, this sweet corn here, it absolutely fits a tropical vibe. Yes, it's a vegetable, but it's one that I used here in the garden last year to really fill the garden out. No one knows it's a vegetable, all they see is that sort of height towering over you, those massive strap-like leaves, and to me, it really fits that jungle vibe. It's all about recreating that effect, remember? And if you can do that, rather than spending lots of money on an exotic foliage plant with a load of sweet corn, then, you know, go for it. Mix them all in together. Personally, if I had a really small garden, I would make sure that every single plant was a plant that I really loved, a plant that had so much to give all around the year, but here, if you've got a bigger garden, if you really want to fill that display out, if you want some quick height, just to try things with a different design, then sweet corn, ricinus, they're all great options to go for. 
So you've chosen a few key exotic foliage plants, and then around them, you've used complementary big leaf plants to really add to that exotic jungle feel. But how do you take your garden to the next level? How do you create a vibrant, punchy, tropical style? Well, for me, it's all about the bright colors, the reds, the oranges, the purples. Yes, I've done numerous videos saying that you can grow anything you want in your garden, but to me, if you want to create a punchy tropical garden that suggests that someone's going to keep going on and on and on, those bright colours really help with the theme. To show what I'm talking about then, on this side of this piece of art, we've got the chrysanthemum and the lily. Do they scream exotic to you? Well, I suppose the lily's got the stature to be impressive, but the colour, the white, that pale yellow, to me, they don't really capture that exotic vibe. I'm sure at one point these plants were rare and unusual, but still they don't really capture that tropical style to me. Whereas this side over here, this definitely does. You've got these bright yellow colours here, we've got the red gladioli there, and over here we've got a bright red canna. To me, cannas, the one the jewels absolutely belong in your summer garden. The colour is so rich, so deep, and they come on strong right at the time of year when your exotic foliage plants are at the biggest and the best. They really combine to create a proper tropical style garden. So if you could take one second tip from this video, it's all the bright colours, a few of those dotted in amongst the green leaves, it really adds that effect. They make the green leaves look even greener, even denser, and those leaves make these flowers really pop out. So combining the green with these bright colours, it is honestly a recipe for a proper tropical success. If you want some other ideas for bright summer colour that flowers well into autumn, then check out my summer garden tour video last year. There's all kinds of different exotics in there. And then I've also done separate videos growing dahlias, salvia. Check them out. You'll get some great ideas to really help add that punchy colour to your garden this year. But for the third and final tip, yes, you've got these green foliage plants. Yes, you've got the bright colours. But if you just had one garden with those dotted down the side of it, to me, it definitely wouldn't have that impact. Yes, you've got the right ingredients there, but they're not combined in the right way. So what's one planting tip that you can do that really help add to that tropical vibe? It's all about packing the plants in, dense layered planting. I've just been around then to help my neighbour push an old car in his garden, come back round and the sun's just dipped below the horizon. Lovely view in the countryside over there. But still, there's just enough light in the sky to explain my final point, the density and layering tropical style planting. To me, that really is a shortcut for creating this jungle style look in your garden. So a great example of this, again, this picture here, a bit of a theme there. On this side here, we've got the Gunnera surrounded by hostas. And that Gunnera is one of the most impressive plants you can grow here in the UK. In terms of leaves, I don't think it can be matched. But that plant there, just in the border, surrounded by a few hostas. Yes, it's nice looking, but to me that doesn't screen jungle. It's just one isolated plant surrounded with hostas. A couple of things I would mention about hostas, if you want a big hosta, a true giant hosta, Empress Wu is definitely my number one choice. And if you want lots of hostas, what I do is wait till the end of autumn, then I go around the garden centres, the department stores, not in an organised way, I just happen to pop in on days out, you know, that kind of thing. And if I see them for reduced, a lot of them go down to two pounds just because the leaves are browning a bit. But obviously hostas, they die down in winter anyway. That's perfectly natural. Those plants will be absolutely fine. They'll come up again next spring. So that's one little buying tip. But anyway, this side over here, yes, there's big leaves. Yes, it's got those greens and some bright colors. But to me, this doesn't really have that much impact. Whereas this side here, it definitely does. Just look how dense the planting is. You've got those tall plants at the back. What that does is it sort of masks the surroundings. It creates the effect of the garden just keep going on. You've got also smaller plants at the front there just to really bring that colour. But for me, what I'm trying to explain, it's all about this mid sort of section here. You've got sweet corns popping up. You've got the cannas. You've got all kinds of the foliage and flowering plants really packed in together. And to me, if you want to create an authentic style jungle garden, or at least an idealised jungle garden that's absolutely bursting with plant life, it's all about combining these plants, different leaf sizes, different textures, different colours. If you can pack them in as densely as possible and have a nice deep border, you don't just want to have one strip down the side of your lawn. If you have enough space to really pack with these plants, if you get it so you can't see the back, or at least it's a little bit disguised, that is a way of creating that mystery, that jungle ambience it is all about. So hopefully these three tips have helped you. Loads of green big leaves, loads of bright punchy flowers, and really pack those plants in. Don't be stingy with your borders or have little islands in the middle of your lawn. Really go big. If you go in jungle style or tropical, 
tropical style, it's all about going big. And to me, if you can really pack those plants in, like I said, they don't have to be rare plants, they don't have to be really tender, hard to look after plants. They can be whatever you want to grow. It's all about the foliage, all about the flowers, and all about packing them in. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Just a quick one with a few helpful tips. I'll see you in the next one.